Next, we will do the section that displays the collection of most recent blog posts. And up to now, our Gutenberg blocks all kind of contain just static information, the information that was uh, kind of typed in in the block editor. But here we will access a WordPress database to, to display post information from there. So it will also be very simple to do it. So let's just start, select the section, block, so what will be posts, title will be posts, and then category will be custom, flex. Okay, so again, let's do the editable label and the title and the subtitle Title, and we can use the the rich text and let's do the button as well so button link um, actually let, let's do something else let's just do button label so use as content and then, because we know what this will do, this should go to the to the post uh, archive, right? So we will use, let's go down here, we have global smart action. So let's use site link and link to latest posts. So, so then we, we don't have to come up with this link on the button, we just control the label and the button will take us to the post post uh, archive so here then we have a bunch of posts six of them so let's select the first let's select the first one we will use it as a template for displaying the posts and then say show posts and we won't show the main loop because we want to do a custom query. So let's do custom query. Post type will be post. Post to load. That could be like ID, created date, um, order up, created date down from the most recent down. We, should, we can search for text, post per page. Let's say six, don't paginate results. Okay, what to do with sticky? Uh, let's just ignore them. Okay, so this will create a custom query and a loop that will go through the posts returned by that custom query. Let's comment P will show us the code. So there it is. And then let's select the image and say this will be post featured image. And let's display post thumbnail. And we can we can let Pinegrow guess kind of responsive sizes, come up with with this. Sometimes you need to tweak it manually, but sometimes it works quite nice. I think in this case it's all is good. And then here is a, a link. So let's say this is post link. And then let's make it bigger. So up here we just have the text. So let's uh, let's split it. So select John Doe and say this is a link. Doesn't matter where it goes for now. And then let's select the, the date and, and make span 
Okay. So now select the link with an author name and then we say post, post, post author. So the field ID display name will go into content and post link will go into link. So this will link, it will display the name of the author in the content and the link will be set to posts link to the list of posts uh, authored by this person. And then let's select the date and then we say post date. And this will display the date the post will, was made or updated. So, okay. Here we have post link and also we have post title. And then this will be post excerpt. And then here this, this will be category. So let's say post text and categories. So we will display category and we will use this element as a kind of template for displaying categories. So if there will be more categories, they, they'll, this will be repeated for each category. We could also like limit how many we want to show or put a, like a delimiter, like comma to separate them. But for now, let's just leave this. And of course, we could also do custom te taxonomy. So, okay. But what to do with the... Now, the first post serves as a template that will be repeated for each post returned by the custom query. So what to do with these other five posts? We don't need them anymore. So we'll just select all of them and we will say don't export. So they will not be exported um, to the code, to the team. So let's say save, export the team and check it here. Let's reload. our posts block is here and we can see that we like the 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 posts are loaded we just have four posts in the database so that's why we only see four of them uh, we have a bit of issue with, with this image because the, the post thumbnail, as it is defined, it's not, um, it's not, um, that doesn't have like all the same proportions. But we, we can use CSS to help us with this. So let's go here and then here. We can use Again, it's a tailwind feature. So we'll use aspect. And we'll use the custom value. Let's say four by three. Mm -hmm. Let's select. An update. And we also have to export the, the whole team so that the CSS file gets copied as well. So now, okay, it looks okay, but of course it's all like squished. So we need also object fit object fit should be cover so that the image covers the whole mm, the whole area okay so here we are let's do another fun 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 feature so let's add the ability to control how many posts will be shown. So on the block, let's add block attribute. 
and let's say number and it will be used as nothing it means we won't display this attribute on, on this element directly let's say number of posts and then let's do a select which will have a bunch bit of predefined value 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's say that's enough. And then let's go to the element with our loop query. And here we have post per page. Instead of using this hard coded, let's spe use a special way. So we say like add character block. And then colon and then the name of the attribute number so this will use the value of the number block attribute in the custom query as the custom query argument okay so let's select refresh select the block and here we have number of posts so okay we, have, we just have four about three two yeah how about let's say six but we only have four that's why only four are displayed so that's that's very cool and you might have noticed that here we were not asked uh, to to attempt the block recovery after we made edits to the block and the reason is that this is a dynamic block and that that dynamic block it means that the block is implemented not as a javascript react block but as a php block so here it is it it has uh, some javascript code that kind of implement the attributes and editable controls but then it has post php and it's a php code that returns the the content of the block so that's why every time we we view the page this code is executed and we will always get the latest posts displayed so by automatically as soon as we use a, a feature like a function that accesses wordpress database like show posts or showing the page title or something like that then pinero will export a dynamic php block because this information can only be accessed uh, from PHP and also we want this information to be kept up to date so we don't want the recent posts to be set at the time that we edit the page but we want it to display the current recent posts at the time when a visitor is viewing the page and again there is nothing we have to think too much about pinegro is smart enough to decide what kind of block to export and in such cases that's a dynamic block um, <clears throat> and in dynamic blocks we can use all all of all these um, wordpress actions like there are lots of them in pinegro or even custom php code um, so the these blocks are very powerful but the one difference is that when we added them so first of all we can't edit text directly on the page and then when we when we added them uh, there is a bit of delay because the the block is always rendered on the server but that's a small price to pay for the powerful feature that we gain um, by using dynamic blocks.